And I think if we believe in ourselves the way God does, then we are, we have a knowing. We have a knowing we can, right? And if we turn down the volume on all that stuff, and I say it to myself sometimes, like even today, before today, you know, am I qualified to be on air and pray? Like things like that, right? But at the end of the day, like if we turn down the volume on that stuff and turn the volume up on, on what God says about every single one of us, which is that we're more than qualified, um, imagine what we could do. A lot of people have heard of, you know, It Cosmetics now as this, well, we became the number one makeup brand in the country. Um, and they know it now. Yeah. But the real story, right, was, was really a story of, I think, God continuing to make me strong enough to be able to carry the weight of the successes mm -hmm. once they happened. Mm -hmm. Because I remember just, I remember, I think it was day three of crying myself to sleep over just how, how can I feel like, you know when God puts something on your heart and you feel it, you know it, you have this knowing. I just knew we were supposed to be on QVC. And now not only did they say no for years, but now the head guy said you're, the words, you're not the right fit for us or, or for our customers. And, and so I, um, the thing that kept me going was every time I would pray and get still, like I felt this knowing. Like, like it was, he was telling me no, but God was giving me a knowing. Mm -hmm. And that knowing was, you're supposed to keep going. We just kept going. And um, uh, shortly after that, we got a phone call from um, who I thought was going to be my big break. <laughs> um, I don't know. See, I have this. Have you ever looked back on your story and you're like, uh -huh. how do I put all these other people on pedestals instead of God? Right? right. So my story is like, oh, this your salvation is right there. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I, even, yeah. oh, it's so easy to put yeah. people on pedestals or, or when, when it should just be God. And, yeah. and I, um, I thought this next person I was putting on a pedestal was this, was this investor, this big private equity company had reached out and we had no money. And everyone was telling us no. And by this point, we were doing one to two orders a day on our website. And so we went through the, the, uh, all the meetings and the whole process. And, um, and we entered the diligence phase with them, which is when they start looking at our product pipeline in the future and our financials and everything. And it got down. I had never been through that process. So I thought, like, it's done. It's happening. It's done. And we got to the final meeting. And my husband and I flew up for it. And uh, he says to me, um, you know, we want to congratulate you on making a really great product. We really believe in it, but it's, it's a no. Uh, we're going to pass on investing in It Cosmetics. And I was just devastated. And I, I remember just that, like, I was so used to hearing no, um, but I said, okay, you know, can you tell me why? And he got really quiet and it just paused for this long time. And he says, do you want me to be really honest with you? He's about three feet from me and he says, um, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. But I'll never forget, probably one of the most powerful moments in my whole life was when he said that, when he said those words to me, I got this feeling, like deep, deep feeling down in here. I, feel, I remember it like it was yesterday that said he's wrong. Wow. Like I felt it. Like I didn't know how I was going to prove it. Yeah. And it was just this another, another moment where it was this big no. But that feeling to me was God giving me a knowing. And, and to cut a long story short, <laughs> um, we, we were at a big beauty trade show. And there was, there were 6,000 women there. I'd entered us a year ahead of time. Because by the time we were there, we had no money. We were already entered, thank goodness. But it was, it was 6,000 uh, people walking the floor of this beauty show. Uh, it happens once a year in New York City and QVC had a, a huge booth there. I had never met anyone in person from QVC and, and then a woman came up to me who I didn't even recognize, but she had been a QVC show host for 17 years. And she said, I just want to tell you, I think our, our QVC gals at home, they need this concealer. It's so good. And I just looked at her and she said, I, she goes, I want to tell you, I went and told the head buyer and I made her try it. And I just looked at the host and just started sobbing. And I think I scared her. She's like, oh, honey. She's like, I don't. But she didn't know what I knew, which is like, yeah. I had no money. Yeah. And we've been getting told no for so long. And um, we, we got a meeting with QVC. And then we got a yes, which was felt really big until I learned what the yes meant. <laughs> um, the yes meant we got one shot live on air. 
and we got 10 minutes. And so we would have to sell over 6,000 of our uh, units of our product, our concealer, uh, to hit the sales goal. In preparation for that one big shot, that 10 minutes on the air, we hired um, these uh, third-party consultants that are awesome, and they help so many people sell their products in stores and on television. And they all told me the same thing. They said, okay, you got one shot. If, you're gonna, if you want a chance at, at succeeding, you need to, to put this type of model in your chair. Perfect skin, same age, same skin tone, because that's what had been done. Right. And I was like, oh, but let me show you why I created this. I'm like, I have rosacea, yeah. and, and I want to put you know, models in their 70s and 80s and different ages and skin tones and, and, and someone with acne, and I want to show like my own bare face. I could prove live how it works. And they were mortified, mm. like literally mortified. And here's the thing, they wanted me to win and they were, they were giving me the best advice they knew how. Mm. Um, but what I've learned is like, anytime we do anything authentically, by definition, it's novel to you because there's only one you in the world. And when mm. you do something authentically, it's never been done before. Right. And what I learned is a lot of times people have a hard time seeing something being successful if it's never been done before. Right. And if I had learned that earlier, I would have saved myself a lot of nights crying myself to sleep. I just thought maybe I'm wrong, right? When everyone else yeah. is saying this will never work. So anyhow, I found myself back in this spot where I had this you know, one shot and it felt like everything was on the line. And I could either do what they were telling me to do, what these third party consultants were telling me, which is really the recipe for success put on a person who has flawless skin that, that people would want to that have. That don't need it. That don't need it. <laughs> and, right? and, and, and at one point I was like, God, can you just take this from me? Because mm -hmm. it feels like I, and I started doubting myself, right? Like I was like, well, maybe if I do it inauthentically their way and then it works, I won't I go bankrupt. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and I can do it my way later. And I, all those <laughs> thoughts. And there was this moment that came over me sitting in that car when I was literally praying and crying where I just remembered like, who is that person at home? Like who, because you know, QVC's broadcast live to 100 million homes across the US and I just kept thinking, you know, for whatever reason I imagined, you know, my customer on the other end. I imagined, I don't know why, but I kept imagining a single mom in Nebraska, like folding laundry, who was way too busy to remember that she mattered and that she's beautiful. And I just had this moment come over me where I was like, if she is gonna bless me with two seconds of her precious time and, and turn on her television, even if she buys nothing, I would rather have her turn on and see women that look like her and, and have me calling them beautiful models and meaning it, even if she buys nothing, I'd rather do that and stand for, for what I believe than, than sell a bunch of product, but Beautiful. stand for nothing. Mm. But sometimes when we know what's right, <laughs> it doesn't mean- It's that, easy. It's easy, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. And um, I, I remember the moment walking into the, the studio and it's, it's live and, and you have cameras everywhere and, uh, uh, just like right now, and they're like, and, but here's what I didn't what I didn't know. So I learned right before. I knew I had ten minutes, but I didn't know that if you're on live and it's not going well, like a minute or two in, they can cut. So you might think you have eight minutes left, and boom, your clock goes down to like one minute left. And I walked in and I saw the giant clocks on the um, on the floor, yeah. and I. I was praying like, oh my God, I had double spanks on. <laughs> Not because I cared what I looked like, but because I was so nervous that I wanted it to catch the sweat. Sorry, Matt. I wanted to catch the sweat. And I was sweating, I was shaking, and I had practiced this demonstration. Um, <laughs> are you imagining double spanks? Sorry. I was... Um, I had practiced this demonstration where I put like the two best-selling... Um, concealers from department stores and hours on my wrist and I bend to show ours never creases in there. So, so I had practiced this in my bathroom a million times and 
we go live and we're all of a sudden live. I am such a, a mess. And, and so I'm like telling her, you know, and look at this. And I try to do, but my hand was like this because I was so nervous. And so she grabbed it. She's like, thank you, sugar. And she put it under the, <laughs> the thing and she took, off, she took over. And um, I remember walking over to the models, all ages and shapes and sizes. And, um, and I knew I wasn't cut yet. That's what I knew, but I didn't know how things were going. And we got down to one minute left. Oh my gosh. Um, and the host says, uh, the deep shade is almost gone, the tan shades. And I'm like, oh. and then I remember at the 10 minute mark, this giant sold out sign came up across the screen, um, which I had envisioned. You know, the way yeah, I always, yeah. I was like, I think Olympic athletes envision landing like the triple axle. So I'm like, envision. <laughs> and all of a sudden it was happening. And there's this huge sold out sign. And they cut from me and went to the next product, which is like Dyson vacuum or something, like a Vitamix <laughs> or something. And I remember I was just like, I was in shock. And I remember I started, I started crying on national TV. And I was like, and my, my husband came running through the double doors of the studio. And, um, and I was like, real women have spoken. <laughs> and he's like, we're not going bankrupt. <laughs> and I was like, good. That, that one, the one Men are from Mars. Oh Women goodness. are from Venus. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and that one airing turned into into uh, uh, a few more that year, and then over a hundred the year after, and eventually uh, we did 250 live shows a year on QVC, and we grew um, to be the number one beauty brand in QVC's history, um, and we are right now to this day. You know, against the stream is kind of your narrative that you wanted to redefine mm -hmm. beauty, and what an amazing story. There's so many things going through my head right now. I'm thinking everything from the double Spanx moment all the way through to, you know, all these biblical characters and heroes of faith that, that you know, and, and, you know, I mean, I'm sitting here kind of almost thinking about even our good friend Mike Rowe, who started on QVC, yeah. and, and, you know, the fact that Dirty Jobs <laughs> is the authentic version of television where he basically flipped the script on work and what a TV host was supposed to be and he becomes the apprentice and you basically take the opposite of what the beauty industry is forcing down the throats of all of us, not just women, men too, and basically changed that narrative. Yeah. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I what love an amazing you for story. That. It's such a bigger story I love you for that. than a sale yeah. of a cosmetic company. Yeah. It's really a win for this anti establishment. And by the way, this is the gift for that's your that's your award. That's the uh, <laughs> this has not only been really a great show. This one too. <laughs> this, here, this, that's for you too. Okay. And yeah. it in addition they match it's, the book covers. It's also been the easiest show and I've said the least amount of any praise program I think in the history of it's been awesome. PBM. Yeah. I know. Hasn't it? I've, and the only negative about this program is I feel like my lips need plumping. <laughs> You still feel like Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm a little, We've and my hair that, over on sure. this side <laughs> kind of looks like it's all sticking out. That Be fantastic you, Sam baby. isn't all that right. fantastic. Authentically is he? you. Authentically you. Uh, your final thoughts, I'll take those and give you them sure? back. I'll put them in the car for you. I those will are, them back. Those are, those are your awards. <laughs> Thank you for Thank being you with so us. Thank you so much. Your final thoughts on this journey. <sighs> oh my goodness. I feel like this journey is just getting started. I feel like for every single one of us, every person at home right now, I truly believe this. Like our best days are ahead of us. Amen. I feel like God's just getting started. And you know, I'm 44. I feel like if you're 94, I feel the same way. And I just, when I look back, even just at the, 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 things we've talked about today, it's just so clear to me how our steps are ordered, hmm. you know, and, and, um, uh, backstage, uh, before we came out, we were talking about working really hard and building things and all that. And, and you know, I am, I'm sure there's so many people at home working so hard right now yeah. and not knowing which direction things are going and all, all the stuff happening in the world right now. And, you know, I think my, the final thing I would just love to say is, because so many people will say like, well, how did you start with nothing and build this billion dollar company? And it's like, yes, I worked really hard and, and I, I got back up every time I got a no or got knocked down. But I really think that the single biggest thing I did like in, in, in building this, this billion dollar business was like make the decision to believe that I could. Yeah. 
Yeah. And 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 I think if we believe in ourselves the way God does, then yeah. we are we have a knowing. Yeah. We have a knowing we can, right? And if we turn down the volume on all that stuff and I say it to myself sometimes like even today before today, you know, am I qualified to be on air and pray? Like things like that, right? But at the end of the day, like if we turn down the volume on that stuff and turn the volume up on, on what God says about every single one of us, which is that we're more than qualified, um, imagine what we could do. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.